Now, although fasting is the act of abstaining from food and not eating, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to sit in this cave and just loiter and do nothing. In fact, there are quite a few things that you should do to enhance the benefits of the fast. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the 8 things you should do while fasting. It's the intermittent fasting to-do list. Do it! Number 1. Drink salted water. While in a fasted state, your body holds onto less water because your insulin levels are low. This can make you urinate, and in so doing, you excrete your electrolytes. To prevent that, add a dash of salt to your water and stay hydrated. If you're fasting for just like 24 hours or less, then I don't really see a point in adding some salt into your water as long as you're eating some food and then you're salting the food. But if you're coming from like a longer extended fast, then it is actually quite important to keep your electrolytes in check and making sure that you get some salt into your day. Another reason to have water with minerals during a fast is to avoid refeeding syndrome. Refeeding syndrome describes rapid shifts in electrolytes that may occur in malnourished patients or when you break a fast too fast. Basically, during fasting or starvation, your body has low levels of minerals and electrolytes. When eating, you raise insulin, which is supposed to shuttle nutrients into cells. Raising insulin after a fast can cause electrolyte deficiencies, exhaustion, brain fog, hypoglycemia, arrhythmia, binge eating and ravenous hunger. The reason is that insulin depletes the bloodstream from these minerals even more, leaving you more deficient. To prevent refeeding syndrome, just add a bit of salt into a water and drink it during the fast. Number 2. Get morning sunlight. Fasting works on the premise of time restricted eating, which is an aspect of chronal nutrition and circadian rhythms. The day and night cycles have an immense role in regulating metabolic processes, including autophagy. Morning sunlight starts off the proper circadian rhythm and synchronizes you with the environment. It can also help to produce melatonin at night, which helps you fall asleep better. Autophagy won't begin if you have low levels of vitamin D because the autophagy zones won't be manufactured in enough quantities. The vitamin D receptor also regulates autophagy, and activating it with vitamin D can induce autophagy. Vitamin D is an essential nutrient and hormone that gets synthesized when your body is exposed to sunlight. That's why you should spend as much time outside in daylight as you can. Even if it's cloudy, the light coming through the clothes is much brighter than indoor environments, and it's definitely healthier. Then we will fight in the shade. Number three, go for long walks. While fasting, your spontaneous non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, may drop due to not eating. This can lead to weight loss plateaus and metabolic adaptation because you're moving less and burning fewer calories. If you're restricting calories, your need tends to automatically drop because you have less energy and you start to compensate for it by moving less. This includes all the other physical activities that aren't exercise, such as moving around the house, fidgeting, twitching, tapping, and general vigor. Low-intensity activities like NEAT are already burning predominantly fat for fuel, because they're not that strenuous. Anything that you can do while breathing normally through your nose incorporates fat oxidation. To overcome metabolic adaptation, you want to still stay physically active and schedule times for NEAT. Going for walks every day, taking the stairs, parking the car further away, and fidgeting more will increase the total amount of calories you're burning per day. Number 4. Apple cider vinegar. Now, you don't have to consume apple cider vinegar if you don't like it, but it has some benefits in suppressing appetite, increasing fat mobilization, and just reducing inflammation, so it's a very useful drink. Apple cider vinegar contains acetic acid, which is a short-chain fatty acid that converts into acetate. This compound can promote fat oxidation and fat loss in a few ways. Acetic acid activates an enzyme AMPK, which promotes ketosis, fat mobilization, and lowers triglycerides in the blood. It also decreases blood sugar, insulin, and delivers production of glucose. One study found that acetic acid reduced belly fat and the fat in the liver of mice. It also upregulates expression of genes for fatty acid oxidation. And lastly, it suppresses appetite and makes you less hungry by affecting the brain's central appetite regulation. In some studies, people who take apple cider vinegar before meals end up consuming 200 to 275 fewer calories for the rest of the day. I myself like to drink 1 to 2 tablespoons of apple cider vinegar mixed with water a few times a day. Number 5. Reflect and Contemplate Most people fast for fat loss and body composition, but it also has many mental benefits. When you're in this semi-depleted fast state, you have more resources the brain can use, and this could be useful for reflecting on your life, as well as contemplating over your actions. Oftentimes you realize how to differentiate between superficial cravings and actual hunger. 
you begin to see that more often than not, people eat out of boredom and they're just wasting energy as well as time. Number six, practice self-control. Everything you do in life is training your neural networks. It's creating habits and determining your future. That's why fasting can be great for becoming more self-disciplined and mindful of these processes. Fasting itself already requires some self-control, especially if you're constantly surrounded by opportunities to eat. If you begin to make excuses, you try to bend the rules, you make exceptions, then you're going to make those same excuses in all other areas of your life as well, because that's how neuroplasticity works. Your brain is always listening to you and it's adapting to you based on the thoughts and emotions and the actions you take. So if you want to take yourself seriously, you want to trust your own word, then you have to take yourself seriously and not lie to yourself or just, you know, binge. Put that cookie down! Number seven, take a sauna. Fasting increases heat shock proteins, which are stress adaptation molecules that strengthen the immune system, fight infections, reduce inflammation, and trigger autophagy. The same happens when you take a sauna or are exposed to high amounts of heat. Saunas have a lot of amazing health benefits. Improved cardiovascular health and lower heart rate, better blood circulation and blood flow to skeletal muscle, promotes physical endurance by increasing the heart's stroke volume, strengthens the immune system and increases white blood cell count, flushes the lymph system from toxins and pathogens, clears the skin and maintains youthfulness, lowers risk of dementia and Alzheimer's, increases endorphins and beneficial brain neurotrophy factors. Using the sauna 4 to 7 times a week is associated with 40% reduced risk of all-cause mortality. Heat stress also releases massive amounts of growth hormone, which will inhibit protein breakdown. Growth hormone stays elevated for several hours after the sauna, and it has incredible anti-catabolic effects. That's very useful for mitigating muscle catabolism while fasting. Number 8 eat enough protein. When you are fasting, then you're being in a catabolic state and this can lead to muscle loss if you don't consume enough protein. So combining a low protein diet with fasting is a recipe for disaster and sarcopenia and muscle loss because you're being chronically deprived from amino acids. Of course, you can't be eating protein while you're fasting, but when you do break a fast, then you want to make sure that you get enough protein. And what I like to do is break the fast with something easily absorbable and digestible protein like eggs or fish and the last meal before I start the fast again that will be something slower to digest like meat. Doing some form of resistance training is also quite mandatory because it will enhance muscle tissue and enhances bone density and all the things so it's very complementary for fasting. You don't want to be just doing fasting because it'll lead to muscle loss eventually if you're just chronically in this catabolic state. If you want to know how to optimize intermittent fasting, resistance training, sleep and food combining, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. Do it.